build is a box which is eight by eight foot like a room and no window only a door and then it starts to get weird a CBS 12 News exclusive tonight. The contractor hired by a Jupiter family accused of caging their teenage son in a box inside their garage. Now sharing his story and Liz, some never before seen pictures as well. Jim Jacques Benheim tells CBS 12 News he agreed to build that seven foot tall eight by eight structure back in December, which was pitched to him as a home office by the family. He quoted the family $3,000 for the two day project. Benheim tells CBS 12 News it wasn't until the project was nearly done that he received several odd requests from Tim Ferreter, the teen's adoptive father. CBS 12 Stephanie Valderrama spoke exclusively with a contractor. She joins us with a story you'll see only on CBS 12 News. Stephanie? Jim Liz, he tells me those requests didn't quite make sense for a home office and he just couldn't shake the feeling something wrong was going on here. The next morning, he contacted police. Jacques Benheim, a local contractor, says since the pandemic, converting garages into home offices has been pretty good business. In December, he was hired by a Jupiter family looking to add office space in their garage. The clients, he tells CBS 12 News, were Tracy and Tim Ferreter. When you spoke to Tim, what did he say initially? He said he lives in Arizona and he just bought a house in Jupiter and they want to move in very soon and he wants to build in, uh, in the garage of the house he just bought in uh, Jupiter an office just like the office he's got in his garage in Arizona where he lives. You have this conversation, nothing seems weird or unusual at this point. At this point, no. Benign tells CBS 12 News Tim Ferreter knew exactly what he wanted. The precise specs of the structure, the materials, everything. An exact replica of the home office the family had in Arizona. What he wanted to build is a box, which is eight by eight foot, like a room. And no window, only a door. He just wanted to get done as soon as possible and as quick as possible. Ben Aim and his team started the project immediately. It would take two days to finish. In exclusive pictures Benheim shared with CBS 12 News, he says here you can see the team building the frame and installing the door. It looks more like a closet than a box. That was day one. The first strange request was when Jacques and his team were only allowed to enter the garage through a side door not visible from the street. They were told to keep the garage door closed. Then he was instructed to put a roof over the structure and closing it. And that was kind of weird because Either you can leave it open and get some air, why to build another ceiling under it? You can just leave it open, the, the ceiling, under the ceiling garage and build your walls up to seven feet and then you'll get some air coming in. At that point, I asked him if he wanted me to open a window for that office and he said no. He suggested running AC into the room, but the idea was rejected. On day two, they went in to complete the project and that's when things got weird. When did it become strange to you? It became strange to me actually in the, in the very last moment of the job, uh, just before we left. The first red flag, Tim Ferreter wanted a hole in the corner of the box. So he, wa he wanted you to build a hole. Just to, to drill a hole. To did install a camera. To install a camera. I didn't install the camera. But he told you that that's what it was gonna be for. Yeah. Then they were told to install the light switch on the outside of the structure, as you can see here, and to reverse the deadbolt so the door could only be locked and unlocked from the outside. What will be the reason for someone to uh, want to reverse locks on an office in the garage, which is completely sealed? And the only reason I could come up with it was that he wants to lock a person over there. That explained why he wanted the switch light to be outside and that also explained why, why he wanted the, uh, the second ceiling so the, 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 the person cannot escape and also the camera of course. Jacques contacted Jupiter police the next day. That was in December. It wasn't until almost mid-January that he heard back from a detective who agreed it was suspicious but it wasn't a crime and there wasn't much they could do. But you had an idea at that point. I told them Basically, the guy, Tim, the father, didn't pull up any permit 
to uh, build that structure. Knowing he could get in trouble himself for building without a permit, he suggested the idea to police. In his mind, it was the only way into the home to see what was going on. Just a few weeks after that call on January 28th, Tracy Ferder reported her teenage son missing. Two days later, police searched the home looking for the boy and discovered the very structure Jacques had told them about. Tracy Ferder was not clear with police about what the structure was, first saying it was an office, then a storage room, and finally a room used by the kids. While investigators were at the home, others located the boy at school. It was then that the boy detailed physical and emotional abuse, saying he was beaten with a belt or jump rope and even spit on, and that he was locked in that closet for up to 18 hours a day and forced to relieve himself in a bucket and clean it out himself. All of it recorded on the camera built into this tiny prison and corroborated by the three other children in the home, according to investigators. I've, myself, I've been abused as a child. It was like I had that feeling. The Ferders were arrested and charged with aggravated child abuse and false imprisonment. Their attorney argued the couple did what they had to do because of the boy's violent antisocial behavior. Jacques repaired his relationship with his family, but as a victim of abuse, he says there's no excuse for what the parents are accused of doing. And tonight he has a message for that teen who was forced to live in that cell Jacques made. I would say uh, I feel very close to you even that I don't know you. I've been through similar stuff in my childhood and I'm so happy for you and I wish I will get to know your name and even to meet you in person. It will make me very happy and be strong little boy. So we have reached out to Jupiter Police to find out after Jacques made that report how detectives actually plan to investigate. And they tell us this is an ongoing investigation and they will not be releasing further details. We've also reached out to the Ferreter's attorneys. Once we do hear back, we'll let you know.